I'd like to commence this video with a request. For those interested in receiving more premium betting tips and predictions, especially if my guidance has contributed to your success in winning bets and generating revenue, I kindly seek your support in revitalizing this channel. Your assistance plays a crucial role in bolstering my presence on YouTube. You're welcome to explore my Patreon support tier or check out my various plans. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you seeking our premium picks. You can find the link in the bio and comment section below. Thank you for considering and supporting me. Cavaliers vs. Magic My team pick is Cleveland plus 4 points Cleveland secured an early lead, heading into the second quarter with a 10-point advantage. The game remained competitive thereafter, culminating in a narrow 104-103 victory for the Cavs. Despite a 43% shooting accuracy, Cleveland managed to limit turnovers to just 10 while also controlling the rebounding battle. Jared Allen was sidelined, his status listed as day-to-day. -day. Donovan Mitchell led the scoring with 28 points, supported by Evan Mobley's impressive double-double of 14 points and 13 rebounds. Entering this match, Cleveland has been averaging 112.3 points per game, placing them 21st in the league. Game 5 marked the first time they breached the century mark this postseason. The team has encountered difficulties in scoring in the paint throughout the season, ranking in the lower half of the league. This trend persisted in the match against Orlando, with Cleveland being outscored in the paint. Their three-point shooting has been inconsistent, highlighted by the consequences when those shots fail to connect. Despite this, Cleveland remains committed to shooting three-pointers at a high rate, albeit with a slight uptick in turnovers on the road. Nevertheless, if they can control the boards, the offense stands a chance of remaining competitive. On the defensive front, Cleveland has been conceding an average of 109.7 points per game. While they have exceeded this benchmark in just three out of four games, their interior defense has been a strong suit throughout the season. This was evident in their containment of Orlando's paint scoring in Game 5, coupled with dominance on the boards. Despite occasional lapses, Cleveland ranks in the top 5 for opponent effective field goal percentage, particularly excelling at limiting opponents' three-pointers. However, their rebounding performance faltered in the Orlando match, emphasizing the importance of forcing turnovers to maintain possession efficiency. This series has showcased a showdown between defenses, and Game 4 underscored just how closely contested these matchups can be. Despite the potential absence of Allen, Cleveland demonstrated their ability to assert dominance in the paint and on the boards. Orlando has displayed formidable strength at home, making this a pivotal game for them, yet their home advantage doesn't grant them an automatic two-point lead. Anticipate a tightly contested game where every possession holds significant value. Cleveland is poised to remain competitive, possibly even securing a victory. This series has showcased a showdown between defenses, and Game 4 underscored just how closely contested these matchups can be. Despite the potential absence of Allen, Cleveland demonstrated their ability to assert dominance in the paint and on the boards. Orlando has displayed formidable strength at home, making this a pivotal game for them, yet their home advantage doesn't grant them an automatic two-point lead. Anticipate a tightly contested game where every possession holds significant value. Cleveland is poised to remain competitive, possibly even securing a victory. My total pick is over 199.5 points. Despite Paolo Banchero's impressive 39-point performance, the Magic fell short in Cleveland. Orlando struggled from beyond the arc, shooting under 30%, and four starters recorded multiple turnovers, with Banchero being the lone player to score at least 20 points. Additionally, Orlando lost the battle in the paint and managed just seven offensive rebounds, although the bench contributed 31 points and Wendell Carter Jr. secured 11 boards. Heading into this game, Orlando averages 110 points per game, ranking them 25th in the league. Their offensive focus on scoring inside has persisted, as evidenced by outscoring Cleveland in the paint at home during this series. Despite being inconsistent, particularly in effective field goal percentage and three-point attempts, Orlando compensates with their ability to draw fouls and convert with confidence at the free-throw line. 
However, turnovers plagued them in Game 5, emphasizing the importance of ball security alongside efficient shooting. Repeating their dominance on the offensive glass will be crucial in avoiding elimination. Defensively, Orlando allows 107.9 points per game, ranking second in the NBA. Their defensive prowess has been a cornerstone of their success, holding Cleveland under 100 points in all but one game. While they've excelled in defending the paint, they faltered in Game 5. Their perimeter defense remained strong, ranking in the top 10 for opponent 3-point percentage and top 5 for fewest 3-pointers allowed per game. Additionally, they lead the league in opponent-made field goals per game. Maintaining dominance on the boards and disrupting passing lanes will be essential for Orlando to continue their defensive prowess and extend the series. I've stuck with a straightforward strategy regarding the total points handicapped in this series. If the total falls below 200, I'm opting for the over. Despite both teams relying heavily on their defense and the pace of play anticipated to be slow, we've witnessed both totals surpassing the mark in games played in Orlando. Additionally, Cleveland's tendency to shoot from the outside contrasts with Orlando's knack for drawing fouls and earning points from the charity stripe. Considering these factors, the favorable play is on the over. Clippers vs. Mavericks My team pick is Dallas Mavericks minus 8 points The Mavericks have been on a hot streak, winning 3 of their last 4 games. Their offensive performance has been impressive, scoring over 111 points per game in their recent outings. They've excelled in ball movement, finding open opportunities, and their rebounding has been particularly strong, averaging over 11 offensive rebounds per game in their last three matches, providing them with ample second-chance scoring opportunities. Additionally, their ball security has been solid, limiting easy scoring chances for their opponents. On the other hand, the Clippers have struggled, losing six of their last eight games. Their offensive output has been lackluster, scoring fewer than 100 points per game in their recent contests. They lag behind the Mavericks in rebounding, reducing their chances for extra scoring opportunities. Moreover, their carelessness with the ball has resulted in turnovers, leading to easy scoring opportunities for the Mavericks, who have been adept at capitalizing on turnovers. Defensively, the Mavericks have been formidable, holding the Clippers to under 100 points in three of their last five matchups, indicating their ability to stifle Los Angeles' offense. All signs point to Dallas covering the spread in this matchup. My total pick is over 207.5 points. The Mavericks responded to their Game 4 defeat by securing a victory against the Clippers in Game 5, marking their third win in the last four games of the series. With just one more win needed to advance to the second round, they aim to clinch victory on Friday and avoid a Game 7 in Los Angeles. Dallas boasts an offensive average of 117.1 points per game, showcasing their scoring prowess. In their recent outing, they netted 123 points while maintaining an impressive 54% shooting accuracy from the field and a solid 35.9% from beyond the arc. Leading the charge for the Mavericks was Luka Donich, who tallied 35 points, 7 rebounds, and 10 assists. Maxi Kleber contributed 15 points and 2 rebounds, while Kyrie Irving chipped in with 14 points, 4 rebounds, and 6 assists. Defensively, Dallas has faced challenges, conceding an average of 114.8 points per game. However, they tightened up in their last game, limiting their opponents to just 93 points, a defensive effort they'll seek to replicate for continued success. The availability of Tim Hardaway Jr. remains uncertain due to an ankle injury, posing a potential setback for the Mavericks in this critical matchup. The Clippers maintain an average of 114.7 points per game overall, with a slightly higher average of 115.3 points per game on the road. However, they've struggled to maintain this scoring output against the Mavericks, averaging just 99.7 points per game in their last three matchups. With a deliberate pace of play, averaging 100.2 possessions per game, and facing a Mavericks team that has conceded an average of 99.7 points in their recent games, the Clippers are likely to fall short of their scoring average in this contest. 
Conversely, the Mavericks boast an impressive offensive average of 117.1 points per game, further elevated to 118.1 points per game at home. Despite averaging 111.7 points per game in their recent clashes with the Clippers, the Mavericks play at a faster pace, averaging 102.8 possessions per game. Coupled with the Clippers' defensive struggles, conceding an average of 111.7 points per game in their last three outings, the Mavericks are expected to generate enough offense to surpass the total points threshold. Notably, the Clippers and Mavericks have exceeded the total points mark in their last two meetings, suggesting a likelihood of a high-scoring affair in their upcoming matchup.